the top three things on your survival to-do list. Fire, water, and food. Let's imagine there's some kind of global reset. You wake up tomorrow morning and the vast majority of the human race has disappeared. As an individual, what could you actually do when there's no longer food magically appearing on the supermarket shelves, no more home deliveries, and the internet has evaporated? Could you not only survive in this immediate aftermath, but thrive in the long term? Could you avoid another dark ages and reboot civilization itself from scratch? What we'll look at in this video are the top three things on your to-do list. Fire, water, and food. Fire has been absolutely instrumental to how we've lived as a species for thousands of years. We use fire to keep the cold at bay, to cook our food and kill the germs. But despite how useful fire is to us, I don't think there's many of us living in the modern world today that actually knows how to make fire. Well, it turns out you can use ingenious combinations of everyday items to start a fire. You could use a magnifying glass to focus the sun's rays into a point, or use just a normal pair of glasses, as long as they're for correcting long-sightedness. Or perhaps even just an empty drinks can. You can use the curved shiny metal base to reflect the sun's light into a point. And if you use something like toothpaste to polish the bottom of that can, that will really help as well. If you can't find something like dried newspaper to use as kindling, cotton wool works exceedingly well at catching a light. Or even something like a tampon. You can use something like Vaseline or lipstick or chapstick or hairspray. These are all accelerants. They're highly flammable and will really help you get a fire started if it's windy or wet. You can even start a fire using a fire alarm. And all you need to do is take out the battery from the back of the fire alarm. And then if you brush this against something like wire wool, it will short circuit through the very narrow wires and that metal itself will catch a light. Water will be a top priority once taps stop running. And the question is, how do you know for a fact that the water you're about to put to your lips and drink isn't going to kill you? You put your suspect water into the plastic bottle and then just leave it out in direct sunlight. And because you've essentially constrained that water to be very shallow, the ultraviolet rays in the sunshine can blast straight through it and kill or inactivate any bacteria or germs that are in there. You can come back to your bottle of water a few days later and know for a fact, know because of science, that it is now safe to drink. Of course, you're not gonna last very long at all without food. And in this hypothetical abandoned world, all you would need to do is find yourself to the nearest empty supermarket and scavenge the food you need off the shelves. I worked out that a single supermarket could keep me alive for 55 years, or 63 years, if I were happy to eat all the canned dog food and cat food as well. Now let's say you're able to scavenge a can of food from an abandoned supermarket, but you don't have a can opener. All you need to do is wear away that thin piece of metal. So you can take your can and find a nice flat slab of concrete 
or paving stone and simply grind the can around and round on its end in circles until you've worn away that metal and the whole lid pops off and you can get inside. Sooner or later, this preserved food is going to have run out. Your recovering society in the long term is going to have to have worked out how to reinvent farming for itself. You could get down to a gardening centre or a supermarket and find seeds for carrots or marrows and, and potatoes. But where in the modern world would you go to find seed corn or wheat that you could push into the soil and grow a crop of cereal and make bread? Well, this is where you would need to go, about 500 miles north of Norway, to the frozen island of Svalbard, deep in the Arctic. Here you'll find the Global Seed Vault, a genetic library of every crop species grown around the world today. This facility has been tunnelled into the side of the mountain, so even if the grid were to go down, the freezing permafrost would keep the seed vault naturally refrigerated for thousands of years. At the entrance, there's a double set of blast-proof doors. This could survive a nuclear war. And once you've got fire, water and food sorted, you can now start turning your attention to everything else you're going to need to reboot civilization again.